Listen to OS from the BBC World Service, Zoe Kleinman. She has come into our studio, but let me speak first to Kerry Allen, who's here, um, our China media analyst, taking a look at Chinese language media for us. A uh, couple of stories that we want to get into. Perhaps I could start with one that really has dominated coverage for weeks now. That is the protests in Hong Kong, this controversial extradition bill that would have allowed uh, people in Hong Kong to be extradited to mainland China um, in, in a much easier fashion uh, if it had gone ahead. But the chief executive, Carrie Lam, uh, she has spoken out today saying she is, that that bill is dead, but not withdrawn, Carrie. Tell us more. Well, this is, I mean, it's still very, very strong language from Carrie Lam anyway. I mean, you know, she's been criticised in the past month for very much speaking up towards the Beijing uh, towards the Beijing government and not down towards the people. So saying that the bill is dead, that the government has failed with the bill, um, there have been failures, this is very strong language that Beijing is not happy with at all. And it very much feels today that for the first time they're actually more or less kind of targeting her and, and criticism towards her for the, for the handling of this situation. Um, so we've seen... Uh, Global Times, which is a big national newspaper, saying, for example, that she's now leaving things up to street politics and that's going to be harmful for Hong Kong. And a lot of pro-Beijing papers, they've been saying that she's going to rebuild trust with the people. I mean, the idea in the past months that she would say, you know, that these would be the kind of dialogues we'd be hearing were absolutely unheard of. I mean, previously it was... You know, Carrie Lam was standing strong with Beijing and, you know, she wasn't going to back down whatsoever. Um, so now the idea that, you know, in Chinese people's minds that she's going and talking to what they've s- perceived as hooligans on the street, vandalizing government property, clashing with the police. They're horrified. They're literally thinking, how on earth is this happening? I don't understand at all. And I suppose she's in... A difficult position now because as you talk about the way she's been perceived in main or in mainland China, for example, but the protests are not happy with her either for saying dead but not withdrawn. Apparently withdrawn is really what they want. They don't care whether it's dead or alive. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, some people have even picked up on the nuances of the difference between her Cantonese um, term of phrase and her English term of phrase. I mean, dead is, is a very strong word but she's almost used a euphemistic term in in Cantonese to say that it's it's like an elderly relative um kind of going home to rest kind of thing so uh, (laughs) so there is the suggestion that um yeah that it's just further delays that the bill is not being cancelled that she's saying you know basically this is another thing she's saying but is she going to act on it um so that continues and I did see the protesters say they will continue protesting so that I, the protests actually began we we're just taking it up March 31st so uh they definitely continue to have uh what would I say I suppose this power and uh, continue to draw headlines let me move on to a different story with you however Kerry this is about the new Mulan movie and there'd be many people that have never watched the animated version perhaps you could bring them up to speed on what that is and yeah. what's happening now. Well, actually, obviously, as an Asia enthusiast, I remember watching the cartoon when I was a child. Um, I mean, the original cartoon, it was produced by Disney, um, and uh, it's based on a true story um, back in the, I mean, around uh, AD 500, like basically the northern and southern dynasties in China. Um, there was a woman who dressed as a man um, to go out to war, and this is what the story Mulan is based on. So it's a, it's based on a true story, but people, you know, who've seen the Disney film they think of the singing the dancing you know it's a musical basically and it's a Disney film it's very fun um, and uh, yeah they're going to do a, a live reboot much as Disney has done with Aladdin recently um, so the trailer got released yesterday but it's had a lot of criticism um, lots and lots of criticism um, so um, some people have been noting for example that um, the house that Mulan um, is is riding a horse from is uh, I mean it's it's in a kind of donut shape and this is a, a roundhouse yeah it's yeah. a roundhouse yeah and this is associated with an area of um, southeast China um, an area called Fujian province um, but Mulan was known as as basically she was from the north like hundreds of thousands of miles well basically thousands of miles away um, was where she was from so the people are saying you know that's inaccurate. Um, and uh, yeah they're basically they're they're not happy with this but also there's the suggestion that um, the Beijing government has, um, you know, is also not happy with with things like this because it's been clamping down in the past 
year or so on historical inaccuracies. It's been calling for this drastically. And, you know, Mulan was a big film that a lot of people in China remembered. They remember watching the original Disney film, so they've been really looking forward towards this. And now they're wondering, is it even going to come into China? <laughs> because that's one historical inaccuracy. You know, they might have to change that now, for example. Uh, there was one article I was reading by Jingan Young in The Guardian who says the Mulan trailer is a dismal sign that Disney is bowing to China's nationalistic agenda, uh, saying that it has changed it, transformed it from a life affirming epic to a patriotic saga showing Hollywood is prioritising box office success. Oh, <laughs> well, I know that they, you know, they, they wanted to when the when the original pictures were released for the lead actress, they wanted to make it very authentic, very true to life. They didn't want to have sensationalist actresses with makeup and such. But one of the things I've also quite found quite funny is, uh, I mean, I remember one of the big cartoon characters in the original Disney film um, was uh, voiced by Eddie Murphy. It was a little red dragon. Oh, yes, yeah. this dragon has, <laughs> has garnered quite a bit of attention or the lack of the dragon this time. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, you know, Chinese people have been really, really getting into programmes like Game of Thrones recently and, uh, yeah, there's no dragon in this trailer. So at the same time, while they want historical accuracy, in, they want historical accuracies with this film, they also want a talking drag. <laughs> yes, and actually uh, going back to Miss Young who wrote this piece, she says the timing of the trailer release is awful with recent events in Hong Kong culminating in police brutality against the anti-extradition bill protesters. Uh, really interesting. Thank you very much, Kerry Allen. A couple of stories uh, that actually we're finding some threads that are going between them for some people as well.